What's up guys, welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. Today I'm gonna to show you the cheapest way I could find to put disc brakes on my Ford 9 inch axle, so stick around. Here are the parts that you're gonna need in order to do the swap. So I went with the Rough Stuff Specialties bracket. It's for the Ford 9 inch and it's for a three inch diameter tube. It uh, The reason I went with that is it has the two bends in it that sits it out farther on the axle. And when you weld it on, you're not welding on top of the bearing cup retainer on the outer flange here. And I don't like that. So this bend puts it out farther on the axle or more towards the center of the axle, which I really like. The brake caliber is from a 1973 to 1987 three quarter ton Chevy pickup truck. So this is the front brake caliber Chevy pickup truck, super common really easy to find probably on the shelf of any auto parts store in your neighborhood these were uh, on the shelf and the matching pads that go along with it the rotor is from a 1989 Ford Bronco front uh, front rotor keeps my five on five and a half uh, bolt pattern that I have on the front and on this axle as well you're also going to need a hose kit that's going to have your weld on brackets uh, for mounting everything uh, this kit is from Curry, got it on uh, Summit Racing, along with this rotor. So it was more than 100 bucks for both, for both rotors and this kit. So it was free shipping. Uh, so all of this stuff that I did totaled up $296.03. The next cheapest brake kit is the Rough Stuff one, which is literally this exact same stuff that I bought. Their caliber is a slightly different. I think you can, it has bleeders on top and bottom, so you can run it left or right. I'm not exactly sure which one it's from, but uh, it's very similar and it's $340. But after tax and shipping, it's gonna be $417.52, saving you $121.49. Uh, to get into any bolt-on uh, bracket, it's gonna be at least 350 bucks. Also, I know there's gonna be more than a few of you that are gonna be wondering why I'm not using an e-brake with this setup. One, the cost is very high. Uh, you're starting at like 500 bucks to do an e-brake setup on one of these. Also, uh, from what I've read on the forums and from my understanding, the, uh, the actual calipers are from like a, is only a two year in uh, the Cadillac Eldorado, the rear calipers that would fit on this particular bracket. And it has this big old spring on here. And from my understanding, they're not very reliable. They seize up a lot. And there's not really a whole lot of nice things uh, the internet has to say about them. So I'm staying away from those, trying to keep it super simple. This side I already got done. So I already know how everything goes together. Still gotta do the other side. So I'm gonna flip this axle around and start working on the other side. One thing to think about when you're doing this is when you're switching over to the disc brake, you are getting rid of the backing plate for the factory drum brakes. So you're gonna need to space this axle out, not the axle, gonna space this, uh, this retainer out. Otherwise, you're going to cause a failure with your seal. It's gonna smash the seal in a little bit more than it's supposed to and it's probably gonna leak on you. So what I did is, see right here, is I just cut it out of the backing plate because this is pretty much garbage anyways, I'm not gonna use it. Just go into the scrap yard. So I cut it out uh, just with my angle grinder and it's not perfect, but it's just a spacer. Painted it so it doesn't rust and now I can use it on here. Almost forgot this. With the axle on here, there's a couple things I do need to talk about real quick. Uh, number one is the Rough Stuff kit, or you know, with this bracket, this axle flange, and this rotor is not really designed to work with each other. Obviously, it's all different parts, kind of you know, Frankenstein together from different years, different vehicle manufacturers. Uh, but you can see that this just doesn't quite fit over the flange. Super close, but it just doesn't quite 
fit. So if you read the fine print on the Rough Stuff website, it says that this is not designed to run on the outer flange like this. It is actually designed to run on the inside of the flange. So what you would have to do if you want to do it that way is you need a different uh, lug nut stud. So this stud is from the front of a Ford F-150. This thing is a 76. Uh, just the front Ford uh, because it's designed to go through the hub and the spindle uh, and this rotor. So it's a lot deeper as far as where it goes through the uh, the flange here. You can see that you know the kind of the locking part doesn't even goes all the way through it. So if you want to run it on the inside, then you'll have to run these longer these studs, you know, through here, and then actually run this thing on the inside of the flange and pound this through the flange. And basically the rotor and the whole axle will become one unit basically. Uh, and to be honest, I don't want to do it that way. I just don't really like the way that's set up uh, for many different reasons. One being that you don't have access to these uh, flange bolts right here because this would be blocking it. You could drill out a big old hole in here, just like in the flange here, to get access to it. You could, you know, if you want to do it that way, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to do it this way, just the same as Tim from Blima Jeep. He did a similar kit uh, back when this uh, bracket first came out from Rough Stuff. Uh, but we're going to have to shave a little bit of material off of this flange uh, before this rotor will slip on. So I came up with a quick solution because I'm here by myself. I don't really have anybody to help me, so I had to get creative with how I'm going to do that and keep a consistent uh, grind uh, on this uh, flange here. I got this rotor all up on here, flush check my run out on it just to make sure that it's not going to cause me any problems down the road as far as vibrations and anything and it was way out of spec like 15 thousandths you want like maybe two to five thousandths of run out at the most you want it as low as possible keep those vibrations down so uh i kind of checked everything super close because on the inside of this rotor i don't know if all of these rotors for the 89 bronco will have it or if it's just this brand but there's a little lip on the inside of here that sticks out uh, that it's probably used to accepting a much smaller flange and it doesn't have that problem where the, ax the axle flange is going to touch it but in this case it's touching it causing it not to seat fully and not to seat flush causing the run out. After grinding that little bit of a lip off the inside of this rotor and uh, a little bit more off the edge of the flange, sits totally flush and it's at 5 thousandths of run out now, which I'm happy with because I actually checked the flange itself and it is at 5 thousandths. So it cannot get any less run out than 5 thousandths. Now that that's done, let's start getting this bracket ready to weld onto the axle. Got my bracket all cleaned up. A couple things I need to note. Clean the metal up really well, and I kind of beveled the edge a little bit where I'm gonna be welding. I had to grind it down slightly because it didn't want to slide over the caliber here so I could bolt it in. So I had to take a little bit of material off of that. Well, 
I will measure to make sure that it's the same height as the other side. The 11 and an eighth. It's pretty dang close or exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressurize this caliber to sandwich it up against the rotor so that it basically centers itself and puts it where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to take a little bit of zip ties here and put it in between the bracket and the caliber so there's a little bit of wiggle room here uh, when you go to change out your brakes or anything like that just, just so it's not totally uh, smashed up against it. Then I'm just going to take my compressed air, smash it together, which will center everything, and then I will tack weld it on. Everything's all pretty tight now, but let's fire up the welder and tack this baby on. One thing I forgot to put in, I made these little brackets from angle iron, and those need to go underneath this bracket here to space it up off of the rotor. Glad I remembered that. Now you are going to want to do double, triple check all of your work, making sure that everything is lined up. Also, noting, bleeder screw goes to the top. So when you're setting up your caliber where you want it to go, want to make sure that uh, this this uh, bleeder screw is as high up in the system as possible. Now that I got everything the way I want it, I will go ahead and take this apart, clean this up one more time, and then burn in this whole uh, bracket. Now the bolts that came with this kit are 3 8 uh, and the bolt that is in the caliper is a 7 16 so you can see it's uh, much larger so it's not going to fit in, I already drilled that one out sorry, it's not going to fit in this so I could send this back and get a whole new brake hose kit but I have my bolts and all I need to do is drill this out to 7 16 so I'll set it up in my drill press and I'll drill it to 7 16 If you're drilling these out make sure that you verify that this the hole inside is clear there's no burrs inside of it that's why you want to blow it from this side if there's any metal it'll blow it out this way and kind of file down the little bit of edges on the one side. And as you can see, we are good to go now. Boom. That'll bolt right up and work perfect. I'm not going to be finishing this, this up today because I got a lot of other stuff to do. Uh, like finish this truss before I figure out exactly where I'm going to make my hard lines and everything. Something like this. I'm not exactly sure yet. Uh, once I get the truss all done and I figure out how I'm going to make my hard lines, but it'll probably end up like this and I'll weld it right here and I'll make my hard lines from this guy right here. Well, that wraps up this part of the build on my Ford 9 inch. I can get started on finishing up the truss and then starting to work on the suspension links, mounts and all the geometry, uh, the fun stuff. So if you guys learn anything from these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when all the new videos come out on uh, this build that I'm doing. And uh, check out our website, muddybeards4x4.com. Links are in the description. And leave me some comments and uh, leave a thumbs up, a like if you want to. And uh, we'll see you on the trail.